Hi guys, today we're going to talk about behavior trees and the needs of Maslow, Asimov and Rosenberg. Uh, and these are kind of at least, uh, these two are famous people, this is a uh, semi-famous dude. Uh, and this uh, video is inspired by this paper, Hierarchical Needs Based Framework for Reactive Multi-Robot Planning with Dynamic Tasks. Uh, it's inspired by some of the ideas here, but we're not going to follow the content uh, very closely. Uh, and the questions we're going to look at, uh, the question we're going to look at is, what are the top level goals of my agent? What is my agent actually trying to achieve in this world? Uh, so if all the top level goals are achieved, then the agent is happy. So what are those goals? So uh, remember doing the back chain design, uh, we pick a number of top level goals and if we achieve all of those we're happy and then uh, we look at ways of achieving those goals. So for instance making sure x, first we check if x is satisfied then we're happy, if not we try to fix x by doing y uh, or, or by doing z and then there's some preconditions here and that leads to new things that needs to be checked and fixed and then we can recursively build a BT achieving our top level goals. But then again, what are those top level goals? Uh, so uh, a related question, at least when, when building robots or creating virtual agents that are somehow um, inspired by humans is what motivates humans. Uh, and turns out that needs uh, is something that motivates humans, for instance, the need for rest. Uh, and uh, these needs, we're ma being made aware of these needs by our feelings. So we feel tired when we have a need to rest or a need to sleep and so on. So can this, this uh, human motivation ideas be translated to an AI agent? Well, yes, uh, and used to choose these top level goals. First, we're going to look at the ideas of uh, Mr. Maslow over here uh, that he put forth in a paper some uh, 80 years ago in, in the Psychological Review Journal. Uh, the assumption put forth by Mr. Maslow is that in order for motivation to arise at the next stage, the previous stage must be satisfied within an agent. So what are these next and previous stages? Well, Maslow created a pyramid, uh, Maslow's needs pyramids, where you have physiological needs at the bottom and safety needs and so on, and then some kind of transcendence here at the top. Uh, so basically, the physiological needs are things like food uh, and sleep and so on, and then there's safety needs. Uh, you need some kind of shelter to feel safe. Belonging needs, you need companionship and perhaps love uh, in different forms. Uh, esteem needs, you need to feel strong and confident. Cognitive needs, you need to, to have knowledge and uh, come up with good ideas. Aesthetic needs, such as art or music. Uh, and then self-actualization and transcendence. It's not really clear to me what this kind of uh, the top of the pyramid actually is here. It's some kind of um, experiencing tranquility or, or harmony or something. Uh, but the, the lower ones are pretty obvious, so, so let's stick to those. Uh, so uh, if we're going to have kind of a top level needs BT here, we can just add them according to Maslow. So, so, uh, and then Maslow's assumption is that these are in order of priority. Uh, in order for the motivation to, to arise at the next stage, uh, you need to satisfy the first stage. So this is kind of like a, a typical BT with prioritized uh, top level goals. So not hungry would be the first priority, uh, then not homeless, and then not lonely, uh, uh, having high status or confidence or esteem here. Uh, having knowledge to come up with good ideas and then having Spotify so you can uh, listen to some good music or maybe some other tools so you can enjoy art, I don't know, uh, um, take it to the museum or something. Uh, 
so that's a bunch uh, of top level goals obviously the, the physiological needs are not just being not hungry but also being uh, not not sleepy and uh, I mean not freezing uh, not being hurt and so on so, so there's obviously more than this but these are examples from, from the levels here Yeah, so that's one way of answering the question, what are the top level goals? We, we, we look at what Maslow did and then we, we assign them like this. What about feelings? Uh, feelings and needs are connected, uh, as we noted. And usually feelings arise when needs are not met. Yeah, and this is formalized as follows. Uh, two fundamental assumptions made by Marshall Rosenberg, the dude in the top right here. Everything we do is motivated by universal human needs. Kind of like Maslow's, but, but kind of a longer list. And then feelings arise when those needs are met or not met. So, so uh, if we're hungry, uh, uh, the need of food is not met, and then having eaten, we have a nice feeling of being full and so on. So examples, if we need energy, that's the need, uh, we feel hungry and then we eat in order to do something about that. We eat to meet this need but it's kind of what brings our attention to the need is the feeling of hunger. Uh, similarly we sleep, we feel tired, we sleep, uh, we need a companion, Maybe we feel lonely, we go on a date or we, we hang out with our friends, depending on what kind of companionship we're looking for or we need. Uh, sometimes one, sometimes the other, sometimes both, I guess. Um, we need a shelter, uh, we're freezing, that's a feeling that makes us pay attention to this need. And then we buy a house. Or perhaps we worry about freezing in the future and then we get a job and buy a house. Yeah. We need a healthy body. If our body is not healthy, we have pain in the back or something. Uh, and then perhaps we do some exercise to, to get rid of the back pain. I don't know. Yeah. There's also these kind of not so obvious physiological needs as uh, and kind of lower level needs. There's uh, the need of freedom. We can feel trapped and then maybe we should leave uh, Either we're physically trapped in the prison and we might want to leave or we feel trapped in, in some kind of the current job or I don't know, the current uh, uh, whatever situation you are in. You need to do something else perhaps. I don't know. So uh, needs and feelings, it turns out there, there's actually a shitload of needs and feelings. Um, there's over 80 different feelings here. Uh, that are kind of uh, clustered uh, in the kind of seven main feelings of happy, sad, disgusted, angry, and so on. So examples, uh, betrayed, for instance, is a special case of let down, which is a special case of being angry. Uh, being embarrassed is a special case of disapproving, which is a special case of being disgusted. Uh, if you have teenagers in your family, you know about they can be embarrassed by different things. Yeah. Uh, disillusion is a special case of confused and surprised. Uh, and successful is a special case of being proud and being happy and so on. So there's lots of feelings and lots of needs and if we want to design our agent we might pick a bunch of these needs as our top level goals. But the thing is, how do we prioritize them? Maslow has had his clear priority, uh, but, but with, with, with this many needs uh, suggested by, by Marshall up here. Uh, so how, is there a clear priority? Obviously, I mean, we, we, Maslow's needs is a subset of this. So, so food might be the most important, uh, then perhaps sleep, then belonging, freedom comes somewhere here at the top right, not, not top, top priority. Uh, but if you want to look at the need for order, the need for purpose in your life, uh, being challenged, is there a clear priority here? Well, perhaps not. So then we, we come into the ideas of utility abilities that we looked at in, in the previous video. Uh, 
So everything, yeah, this again is the assumption of Marshall Rosenberg, everything we do is motivated by universal human needs and feeling arising when those are met or not met. And here's the idea. How about using this feeling intensity as a utility? If we're super sleepy, then there's a high utility of sleeping. If we're super hungry, there's a high utility of eating. So uh, we have a need of being not tired. Uh, if we're super tired, there's a high utility of attending to this need. So, so the utility is fed back here, and this guy uh, sorts this as being uh, to the far left or something. Similarly, if we're super hungry, uh, the utility of eating is very high, so maybe we should do that first. Yeah, and then it's just not the feelings, right? Sometimes we're super hungry, uh, but it's in the middle of the night, the stores are closed and the fridge is empty. Uh, you should really try to sleep and then get some food in the morning. Uh, so even though you're super hungry, it might make sense to, to worry about another need, because then the utility of eating or trying to get food is low because you're not going to be able to get any food in the middle of the night, perhaps. So that was uh, Maslow and, and uh, Rosenberg. So what about Asimov and his laws of robotics? Uh, Asimov, as you might know, had three laws, suggested three laws of robotics. Uh, and can we use those to find our top level goals? Well, the first law was a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Second law, a robot must obey the orders given by a human except if they conflict with the first law. So if a human tells the robot to kill the human, uh, the robot is not allowed to follow orders and kill uh, a human or any human. And the third law is protecting its own existence as long as uh, that complies with the first two ones. So if the human orders the robot to, to turn itself off, uh, that's okay, even though it kind of, at least temporarily, uh, shuts down its own existence or at least ability to, to act. So then you can use these three as, uh, three as our top level goals, uh, human safe, orders executed, and then robot safe. And then we have some actions to make sure the humans are safe, to execute the orders and make sure the robot is safe. This might uh, give you some problems. And for instance, if you kind of uh, pass the street here and the, the human tells you to pass the street and executing orders is more important than keeping the robot safe. Maybe you pass the street and get hit by a car. Uh, so, so keeping, usually we would like to have the robot safety to be a higher priority. Uh, I mean, Asimo designed this uh, so that the human can tell the robot to destroy itself. But in most orders are not going to be that, like that. And in those cases, we want the robot to kind of stay here until all the car, cars have passed and then pass the street safely. Um, so you can get inspiration for this, but, but uh, you should think about the, the order here. Yeah, so what about this paper? We had that on the first slide of the uh, video. It has robot needs. Well, uh, in this paper, they suggest a, a kind of a similar as, as Maslow's needs pyramid that would apply to robots. And then the first need would be to avoid collisions and avoid harm to the robot. Uh, that would be safety needs. Then we have the basic needs of not running out of battery. Uh, the current task needs, execute whatever task you have. And then there's the team task needs. Uh, if you have no tasks of your own, you can help your team. And then the self-actualization, the kind of the top of the Maslow's pyramid here, would be to uh, learn new skills. So, so if you have no individual tasks and no team tasks, you can kind of learn new skills uh, for the future, which kind of makes sense. So this gives us kind of this design of, of the top level uh, objectives. Be safe, make sure the battery is okay, do whatever you're told. So look, uh, note that this is uh, to the right uh, uh, of being safe. Uh, and if, if you do what, what your own orders are, you can help your teammates, uh, either humans or robots. Uh, and if you also did that, uh, are you fully skilled? No, then you can learn something new.
think this is kind of a nice design. So now we're going to look at a common mistake when, when choosing your top level uh, goals uh, for your agents. So, so uh, it's common to think of the sequence as first I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and then I'm going to do that. So if you want to be not hungry, then maybe you think first you want to make sure the oven is on, then you want to make sure the food is warm, then you're going to make sure you're not hungry. Uh, but these are actually ways of achieving this. So this, this is a good top level sub goal, whereas these are ways of achieving that. Uh, and if you're not hungry for some other reason, it makes no sense to, to make sure the oven is on. So the top level goals should be independent and not sub goals of other top level goals. Uh, yes. Uh, so, and these sub goals will appear when you do the recursive back chain design, they will appear as a way of achieving the top level goals if, if you have a way of um, cooking stuff on the oven. Uh, so, otherwise, uh, you might have a problem when you when being not hungry, and so everything is fine on this respect because you have some bread or something, and then you still make sure you put the oven on and you still heat up food that no one's going to eat and so on. So just pick independent top level goals and let these appear um, down the tree. So um, to summarize, choosing the top level goals of an agent. So when doing a back chain design, we start from some kind of top level goals and then we, we work recursively from those. So, so what, what top level goals should we choose? We can be inspired, but uh, by what motivates a human, we have this, uh, all these feelings and Maslow's needs and there's some other list of needs and so on and so on. Uh, so we can be inspired by that. Uh, so, so when picking the top level needs and uh, goals, sorry, we can look at Maslow's pyramid, priority pyramid of needs. Uh, we can also use feeling intensity if we have lots of needs. We, yeah, a fixed priority often does not make sense. We can use feeling intensity as utility to have a flexible priority. Uh, or we can look at, at the, the five suggested robot needs from, uh, from the paper by the people at, uh, in Georgia. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching.